Hello, this is Clemens from Autotonic and in today's video I want to cover some of the basics of the user interface. So when looking now at the software, then we can see two keyboards and the uh, lower one, the, uh, the bottom, is uh, the input keyboard. And um, this actually represents what we are going to press on our hardware MIDI keyboard controller. So this is our input section. And the upper one is the output keyboard and these yellow highlighted keys uh, show us what the transposing will result in or could uh, be potential output material. And uh, in the middle section we have these two modifiers. It's the one is the tonic modifier and the other one is the scale modifier. And these two components um, define all our harmonic content. And each of these modifiers has also this uh, little uh, lock toggles here, so it's a tonic lock and scale lock, and this uh, will result in making the particular settings here permanent for a specific active header on the input keyboard section. There is, uh, uh, speaking of headers, these are headers and you can uh, drag them and uh, replace them, and uh, there is also this one header here. And this is called the power button header. And this allows us to place, for example, the power button on a specific uh, key, which will then uh, act as a power toggle for the whole transposing engine. So when power is off, then of course our black keys will uh, remain sounding and when turning the power button on our uh, transposing engine is active and we are using as it is with autotonics uh, innovational idea that we are using uh, the black keys as function toggles which can actually be loaded up with certain harmonic content here Okay, so this is about uh, the main user interface and there, uh, by clicking these areas, uh, these uh, arrows here and or the scale label, we can also access or hide, um, how you will call it, um, the MIDI I.O. section, so where we can define our, our input and output routings and uh, this access the serial and, serial and credits and user manual menus or the export import reset database functions uh, which I might cover in a later video. Okay so this is uh, about the main user interface so far and uh, one thing that is also quite useful maybe to mention here is a right click menu that exists here. So you can access here quite useful um, keyboard shortcuts manually. And then uh, one thing also to mention here, there is going on this indexing numbers here on the bottom and on the top, um, which um, re represents the transposing. So you can always trace back. So free here will be free here and free will here. Um, so if I'm going to change the free to a major third here, then you can see there is now three intervals in between here, uh, one and three, one, two, three. So you can trace all, always back um, what the transposing is doing by um, following these numbers here. Um, yeah. And one thing that is also quite interesting is uh, about the user interface. You cannot change this first um, interval here. So all the intervals are free to set, but the first one is uh, fixed as it is defined by the tonic, of course. So the first one is always your root note. Or uh, you can also, I can give you this example, to empty out all the scale intervals. And for example, set my tonic, my root note to D sharp. So only D sharps will be highlighted in the output section, means that in the input section, which will be reduced now from the sides, um, I can only trigger the main root notes of D sharp. Um, on the other hand, if I'm going to set up all my intervals, so there will be 12 steps. This is a chromatic scale then. Um, 
will be mapped out here to the uh, to the keyboard. And as you can see now, I'm dragging these input anchors, which is useful, exam useful for example to compensate for various pitch heights. So. Um, Give you one example which might be uh, to give you one example which where this might could be useful is when for example um, using two um, let's say uh, two two various um, headers um, here which are uh, different in pitch so uh, for example this is in C and this one is in B okay so these are complete um, of, of, uh, the, uh, maxed out by uh, its distance. So the one is C is C is here at this height, okay. And now I'm um, I'm modulating up from from the B note. The first one did start on C here, and so this header starts on C. And this one starts on B, which is way higher than the first header. And um, there, there it comes handy to offset to offset these um, input nodes. So you can by dragging these uh, input anchors, the blue one are called input anchors, the yellow one called output anchors. You can offset or pitch correct the input notes. So now, for example, I am still playing in B major union, but starting an octave lower. And when now going back to the other header, then uh, this will be in a much closer the uh, harmonical uh, distance area. Um, okay, so this is, um, for example, the pitch correction. And one thing that is uh, quite important about autotonic is that you can set up any count of intervals here. So you're not limited to only use um, seven notes uh, scales as it is with uh, existing other uh, transposers, or you're not limited to use only five scale trans uh, note scales, but you can use any count. can see actually what uh, this might could be useful so so I can compensate by dragging offsetting these uh, blue anchors I can compensate um, by by moving these anchors to a certain position. I can compensate the height. Okay. This is a was a quote, uh, a short video about uh, some basic functions. And I already um, yeah, got into the deeper stuff here with the pitch correction. Uh, it is quite difficult to keep it simple because it is complex program and uh, sophisticated uh, scale note mapping. And I haven't seen anything before like this. And this uh, was also the thing that drove me to um, create this software. I hope you appreciate and like it as well. And I would appreciate any feedback of you. Um, thank you for watching and uh, keep it up. Thank you. Bye.